And so we had one group talking about what to do in the run-up to, what we can do in the run-up to the Paris talks. And Tina was in that group. She's going to sum up uh, some of the main points. We talked about um, doing it with a diversity of approaches and then not just at the actions, and obviously the big thing is on the 29th of November where we're going to try and mobilise as many people as we can to come down for the march. But we also want to try and engage people who aren't activists, who aren't in groups already. So anybody who's attending demonstrations, or uh, meetings rather, sorry, rather than demonstrations, we were talking about talking up you know, the actions that are coming up, in, what's coming up in Paris and how it affects people. And trying to get a general public interest going and working within our communities. And uh, Nana's are tying in with fuel poverty and we're going to start talking them up at our meetings and trying to drum up some more so we can actually work together. There's such a link, which is why haven't we done this? Um, Samba Unity, there's uh, Samba bands playing in London on the 29th, but they're also playing in Paris, and they're tying together Samba bands from all parts of the country, so we're looking forward to that, that will tie that in. Uh, WI, Pamela's got to go and talk to the WI and see if we can get some talks, you know, engage in, if there's anywhere in the country that they, they want to have a meeting and they want to invite someone to come and talk about what's happening in Paris and how it affects people, then we can arrange for speakers to go along to that. Um, we've also considered that maybe being meek and mild isn't always as successful as we'd like it to be. So we need to be a hell of a lot more disruptive and so some of us feel we might need to up our game a little bit. Uh, we're fluffy nanas but there's no point in pretending we are protecting our young and like anything protecting our young there's no stopping us and we will do more than we, than we are currently doing I would imagine. So uh, we're going to fly a demo. So schools are having um, a strike on the 30th of November. It's called a climate strike. So we're going to encourage mums and dads and grandmas and carers to take their kids out of school that day to talk about their future. Uh, so I think that's going to be a really good day to be involved in. That's the 30th of November. Um, there were people talking about hunger strikes and that although they haven't necessarily succeeded or done as much as they could do in the past, that maybe in a time like this where more and more people are awakening to the threats that we're all under, whether it's from fracking because it's directly in their backyard or from all of the other things they're now hearing on the television, they might actually start relating to these climate talks and feeling like it is about them. That it's not about some distant planet we have to say is actually our ecosystem we're relying on for air and water that we have to look after. So there was talk about targeting a, a hunger strike to be in line with another action that's happening. There was talk about coordinating it with the climate with the climate strike on the 30th of November, and I believe two in our group are going to get together and talk about that. Um, also about targeting it to a person so that if you're going to go on hunger strike, uh, maybe approach a lord or an MP and say, I am doing this until you do this so that you put it on someone's shoulders. You burden them with your burden. Uh, we also talked about um, one of the really simple things you can do that we just don't do enough, but the lobbyists certainly do, which is we should be lobbying our MPs, you know? Go and bother them. Take the information you have that you know about. Don't underestimate that. When we fought up in Lancashire and won over the planning and got the fracking stopped, it wasn't really because we were on the streets looking gorgeous and, and really making a fuss. That really helped to get the attention. But it was the hard work of the people inside who'd done the late night research, filled in the injection letters, and actually done all the legwork and lobbied their MPs and councillors that actually won the case for us. So don't forget the boring stuff too. Anyway, so that was the pre-stuff. It's essentially, in a nutshell, whether you're an activist or not an activist, try and wake up your community to realise this is about them. It's not a distant thing. Thank you. Thanks, Tina.